In this video, we're going to see how we can use the gazebo simulation of our Tesla boss to look at a sphere using a depth camera. And then we're going to see it in Arvis to visualize the point cloud, and then also see the depth map as you can see on the bottom. If you haven't seen my Tesla boss simulation video yet, go ahead and check out this video in my channel. But in this video, I'll be going over what is a depth camera, talk about the ROS depth camera gazebo sensor setup for your URDF file, talk about the depth camera frame orientation, which can be pretty confusing, and talk about the gazebo depth camera simulation, and finally show you how to set up everything in Arvis to see your depth map and the point cloud. So what is a depth camera? A depth camera uses one or two cameras. So here we have a right and left camera. And usually there's something that we call the IR projector. So what this does is it's going to project some IR dots. And sometimes if it just uses one camera, it can be enough to detect the location of those points. And since you have two points of view, you can figure out the disparity between the left and right image. And then from there, you could determine the depth using some similar triangles. And from the depth, we can finally determine the point cloud for the scene. So here is an example of a Intel RealSense depth camera, the D435. So here you can see this is a general structure of the camera. And some important parameters would be like the base length. You need to know the distance between your cameras. And then you have what's the focal length because when you have a camera model, you have um, some focal length that will um, project your scene to your image plane. So that's the general idea. You could have like an object here, and this object is projected in your image plane. So I have a video where I talk more in depth about uh, understanding depth maps with OpenCV. So you could go ahead and check out this video for more information. So now let's take a look how we could set up our depth camera gazebo sensor for our URDF file. So previously, we used our head to camera transform in the gazebo section, but now we're creating a new joint for it. And we'll explain the details of that later on. So we're changing this pose, which took care of some of the transforms. And now we're setting the pose to be all zeros. And then we're going to be creating two links. So we have one link here called the camera link, and then another link here called the camera frame link. So we're going to have two joints. The, these joints will connect the different pieces. So we have the head and then the camera link. So we're making a joint to connect the two. And then here we're doing the transform that we did previously here. So we're moving this transform that we did previously to this. And then we're creating a second joint called camera link to camera frame link. So this will do the transform between these two links. And then this is going to be the transformation that we're going to be applying. And in the later section, I'll talk about the details of what that actually entails. So if we take a look here, um, the gazebo URDF file for the depth sensor is going to be very similar to the camera sensor. So I talked all about it in this video, my camera, gazebo, and Arvis video. So if you want more information on how we set up the camera, you could check out that video. But here you can see this is the part that we need to add inside our gazebo file. So you can see here we have the camera link, and then we have the camera. And here's the main part that we changed is now the depth type. So this will enable our depth images when we're in Arvis. So I updated some things like the horizontal field of view. Um, and then I also played with the clipping because I want to see a broader range. And then here, I just renamed some of my plugins. And the key part you need to add here is actually the frame name. So this will associate your um, camera frame to the right link, which will take care of some of the transforms that we did previously. So let's take a look at the camera frame orientation. So below shows the transform between the camera link to the camera frame link. So initially, the camera link has the x-axis pointing in the direction of the camera. So you can see here is the x-axis, and it's pointing in the direction of the camera. But we want to find our camera frame link. So this will describe the camera frame, which is how typically the camera is oriented um, when you're actually going to display the point cloud. So we're going to do a series of transforms. So the first one is a rotation about 
the x in the negative pi half direction. And then that's our first transform, and this is going to rotate our z axis. So now our z is pointing to um, in this direction, and y is pointing down. And notice that we're doing about the original x axis. And then we're doing a second rotation about the z axis in the negative direction of pi halves. So you can see now our x axis is pointing to the right. So this is our new x axis location. But the key point is to have the z axis pointing in the direction that the x axis was pointing in. So this is what we're expecting the camera link frame to be oriented. So if we scroll down, you can see that here is um, the view of the expected resultant frame. So you can see that the final orientation is the z, and that's the expected orientation of our camera frame. And you can see x is pointing to the right, and then our y is pointing down. So if we don't do these transforms, our point cloud is going to be all messed up, and it's going to be like upside down, and the sphere will be this way. So if you do all this correctly, then you should see your sphere in the right orientation somewhere on the floor. So now let's take a look at our gazebo simulation. So we're going to set up our scene so that when we're in Arvis, we could actually see something in Arvis. So go ahead and go to your workspace, build it, uh, source, and then run the launch file that we talked about in our Teslabot simulation in our gazebo tutorial video. So after you run that, you're going to see the Teslabot simulation here inside gazebo. And you could just throw in a sphere like this, and that will set up our scene to view everything in Arvis when we actually set up everything. OK, now let's take a look how we can set everything up in Arvis to see the depth map and point cloud simulation. So in the terminal, you just want to run your Arvis2 command. And then here, you could set up everything. So initially, there's nothing. And then when you hit Add, you're going to see an Arvis window pop up. And what you could do is double click this for the point cloud and the point cloud will show up. And if you want to see the robots, then you want to add in the robot here. So if I scroll down, you can see the robot model. And if you double click that, uh, what you want to do is choose the right topic, which is the robot description. And you can see our robot is now showing up. So this is our point cloud that um, we're expecting. The orientation is all correct because we set up the frames correctly. So now we could go ahead and add um, image here, so you could uh, you can also view it from here. So under depth image raw, you can see image here, and you double click that, you can see this is our depth depth map image here. So this is pretty nice if you want to use that for something later on. But we can also see in our gazebo simulation. If I pull that up, um, you could also play around with changing the location and seeing the different things move around. So here you can see I have the ball. And if I drag it, then you can see the depth map here and the point cloud updates, which is what we expect. So it's nice to see everything moving uh, dynamically. OK, so if you found this video helpful, give a like and subscribe. And I'll see you in the next one.